Hey, how are you doing? Welcome back to Dem Studios production meeting. We're up to number 11. And uh, some of you had many from the beginning, so I'll fill you in what's going on here. These are the meetings where I attempt to give the viewers a chance to know what I'm working on behind the you know, lines, behind the scenes, what we're working towards, and uh, possibly w at times we'll give we'll show you some different stuff so you can tell us what you find interesting so we can work in those directions. Otherwise, it's all left to me. <laughs> so, uh, but today I'm updating on some stuff going on with the studio. First of all, um, it's not really that I'm complaining as much as I would like to point out something that YouTube needs to look at. Now, I know everyone's bitching on this ad change thing. Now, on one side, I'm going to say it's not censorship. I see and I listen and I take, I look at these classes from YouTube. And like a lot of them say, the main thing is, don't do it for the money. Well, what the fuck are you bitching about? Okay? You weren't being blocked, just not paid. And if it's that important to say what you want to say and you believe it, you'll do it without any promise of pay. Now, I've had a couple videos blocked, ad-wise. And it's not, and there, I've had some, I understand. I had one of these, well, in one of the real damn studios, well, I de dealt with the discussion of some different painkillers I'm having to use medically. And my opinions on them, we're not going to go into them here. But they blocked it for ads. Some places I understand they wouldn't agree with the opinions. Ads could do that. I'm not going to take the video down, though. And I'm not going to change it. The message is still true. Now, so I just don't take the ad on it. That's a problem. Now, I have some with my moments in history, though, that have been ad blocked. More than anything else that I've done, which is still to say only like uh, five or six. And in these... What I am doing is I'm taking the picture and the very caption from a book back in the 1950s that was approved for educating students in middle school and high school in Montana. Now, it was approved then for general consumption and now it's not that's not evolution okay I I get so few views neither would make a difference you could double my views on everything I still wouldn't see a penny but you should look at the system if it's cutting things that are just historical information. It's like scientific fact, blocking things for facts. Okay? It ain't going to work that way. Let's just look at that a little bit. That's just my inner piece on that one. Um, but I'm not going to take the videos down. They're still part of a line of history. And it's, I think, little pieces like that in bite-sized chunks... Maybe the only way in the future people are going to accept information like that. So, next subject. Bing! Racetrack. Hermiston Raceways. I've been asked to temporarily announce some of their races. So while I'm there, I'm going to film some stuff, and I'm going to get some archive stuff, and I'm going to throw all that onto the website under Hermerson Raceways, the ones that say booth will be the ones in the booth, which is what's interesting is 
I just am recording. I'm not editing it. So what you're hearing is the noise in the booth, and you can kind of get an exposure to the chaos. You probably didn't realize what's going on in there. So um, that's going to be fun for a little bit. Give you some different. And I decided to do that because, like I said, with the YouTube thing and the classes, they go through different groupings, different things, different subjects, different styles. And I wanted to explore as many as I can. And this one gives me a chance to kind of explore almost a sports angle. Oh, I wouldn't really call it sports, but a lot of people do qualify it as that. So that's the way it should be approached. Now, because genres aren't designed so that I am more comfortable, it's designed so you understand the viewer, what you're looking at something, have an idea what it is. Okay, next one was one that Morgan brought to me. Frau Morgan, if you remember her, actually Morgan Norman. And a uh, great assistant here. Every female voice you hear in a lot of my animation stuff, storyboard animation stuff, is her. Uh, most of them are. Uh, she does Alice. She's also starting to, you know, get a little, she used to be involved more, if you look at the old stuff, um, of the reanimated series. After the Seattle series, but when I first got to Kennewick, the reanimated series. And she used to assist me in that. Well, she's gotten a chance to start trying to come back and help some more. So, in that, she, we were talking one day and she decided, because one of the things we do on a side is we do role playing games. We decided we'd like to get to the point that maybe we could do, because they have the live feature they've added now, is if we could do. An RPG Live. Now, that's going to take, as we try it out, the players getting used to it, as well as seeing if the viewers are even interested. So what we've done, we picked the Weird West. A couple players wanted to you know, try a Boot Hill style game. But I go a Weird West because I like the possibilities of the Supernatural. That makes it a little more fun. So it's called RPG Live. It's not really yet. What we're going to do is get used to it. Right now I'm just going to take it. Direct edited though. But I'm just going to take out the boring game mechanics that you listen to during the game. Basically, you need to roll this number. I rolled this number. It had this effect. I shortcut that and you just, you know, that takes out about half the gaming time. Basically, but it leaves the story. So, and then we don't know which direction it's going to go. It depends on the players. And how they roll, as well as how they play. So it's kind of fun. So we're going to be throwing that on the website as well. Occasionally plugging it in spots, because on some areas and some of our files, I did like a year's worth about a year ago. And we're getting close to getting those done. So that's going to be a couple things we're also going to discuss here. Uh, one is moments in history. And I've already like scanned the images. I've got the stuff ready. Um, I've just got to go through and make them all. Make another year's worth. So I'll be doing that soon. But also what it, we have run out of, you probably notice is, well, probably notice. Well, moment, history or the um, damn weird's gotten our most views. But only have a few videos. Most of the time I get 5 to 10. But we ran out of the ones I already did. So we're gonna, I'm getting a new series set up. I'm cutting that intro way down in size. Because I said what I need to say and why I started doing this. And people want they can go back and look at those things. This is just going to be the basic short intro like you see in a lot of videos. You know, and... Uh, but this time Morgan's going to be reading the... Uh, go through the dialogue for me. I'll still do the research. She may even help on the research. But we'll do the research I'll, and I'll do the writing and editing. I'll put it together. But she'll be doing all the lines. Get a little more involved here. Uh, other things she's also done is she, you know, if, you, if like I said, if you've coming up is Evil DB. That's the closest one I have now coming up with her. Doing a 
Alice. As well as a few other female characters. Uh, she played in Something Evil, Something Scary. She was the detective, Riddle. She still do plan to sometime try, turn to that. We're still experimenting and learning what our style is. That's what a lot of this is about. I went through a lot of the classic training stuff, but I don't know about you, but I'm one of these people that are f constantly flipping through the channels on TV. I've got tons of stuff I can look at. Nothing is interesting. What people are doing now, although popular, and I admit it, that's why I never succeeded because I don't fit into that niche, that, that group. Um, I do what I want to see. See, we were talking earlier really about the show, and this show is about doing just the kind of stuff that what I wish was on TV. Um, there's other people doing the other stuff, and they're doing fine. Not what I want. Not what I want to see. Probably maybe three or four others out there that want to see it. We'll see how that goes. Also, in the future, I'll be doing some more old man rants. Some things in the YouTube classes said, you know, open to your viewers. So I'm going to go through a few of the, well, the more stupid things I did, therefore entertaining, in my past. And we'll go through that because one issue I'm finding in life is I hate secrets. I'm tired of when I'm studying history and in facts, everything around, everyone's keeping secrets. If we just had the truth and the information, we would be a better society now, no matter what. So just get past that shit and so therefore to express and not seem so much a hypocrite, I'm going to go through some of my situations that kind of wish people didn't know about me, but, you know, if I want to be honest, I should say. A little bit of therapy there. I'll be on a real damn studios, of course. So, that's it, I believe. Yep, should mention, uh, Morgan Norman has also been known as Frau Morgan. We're working on the show originally, back on Reanimated. She also was a drag king for a while as Raven Von Drake. Uh, but a drag queen got upset and wanted the name Raven. So now she became Maximum Pain. Uh, still occasionally performs in Seattle. Uh, we're going to be working on some stuff on here for uh, developing a show called Maximum Drag. And uh, some she can take on the road maybe. We'll film, put on the air. We'll see how it goes. So, thank you for your time. And we'll see you probably next month. And I'll update you again. Thank you. And just copied it in pencil. That's pencil. Merfolk. All in a search for more in life. In the history of the natural world to the supernatural, I found many weird things. But just because I don't know what it is doesn't make it supernatural. While the true heart of science is to always question even yourself. In the end, I have become an objective atheist. I am an atheist, but I want there to be more. Merfolk, mermaids and mermen, is a legendary aquatic creature with the head of the upper body of a human and the tail of a fish. 
Historical accounts of mermaids such as those reported by Christopher Columbus during his exploration of the Caribbean may have been inspired by manatees and other similar aquatic mammals. While there is no evidence that mermaids exist outside of folklore, reports of mermaid sightings continue to this present day, including 21st century examples from Israel and Zimbabwe. Cyrenomelia, also called mermaid syndrome, is a rare congenital disorder in which a child is born with his or her legs fused together and a small genitalia. This condition is about as rare as conjoined twins, affecting one out of every 100,000 live births. It is usually fatal within a day or two of birth because of kidney and bladder complications. Four survivors were known as of July 2003. The goddess Atargatis showed as a fish with a human head on an ancient Greek coin of Demetrius III was one of the earliest seen recording of this image. The first known mermaid stories appeared in Assyria about 1000 BC. The goddess Atargatis, mother Assyrian queen Semiraceus. From there it seems that merfolk of some form or another seem as much as a part of society as fish and as common. Sometime before 546 BC, Milesian philosopher Anaximander postulated that mankind had sprung from an aquatic animal species. He thought the humans who began life with prolonged infancy could not have survived otherwise. In truth, he was not fully incorrect. Humans did come from the sea, or more correctly, our predecessors did. Certain factors of our forms betray that secret. Besides the basics of pregnancy and its life starting in water, as simple as our eyes is proof of this filled with liquid and the flipping of the image is said to come from when we lived in the water. Underwater is up and down flip for buoyant species. In 1493, sailing off the coast of Hispaniola, Columbus reported seeing three female forms which rose high out of the sea, but were not as beautiful as they are represented. The logbook of Blackbeard, an English pirate, records that he instructed his crew on several voyages to steer away from charted waters, which he called enchanted, for fear of merfolk or mermaids, which Blackbeard himself and members of his crew reported seeing. These sightings were often recounted with and shared by sailors and pirates who believed that mermaids brought bad luck and bewitched them into giving up their gold or dragging them to the bottom of the sea. Two sightings reported in Canada near Vancouver and Victoria, one from sometime between 1870 to 1890 and the other from 1967. The Pennsylvanian fisherman reported five sightings of a mermaid in the Sassola River near Marionette in June 1881. I don't know if it was the same one sighted five times or separate mermaids. In August 2009, after a dozen of people reported seeing a mermaid leaping out of Haifa Bay waters and doing aerial tricks, the Israeli coastal town of Kiryat Yam offered a $1 million award for proof of its existence. In February 2012, work on two reservoirs near Kokwe and Muter in Zimbabwe stopped when workers refused to continue, stating that mermaids had hounded them away from the sites. It was reported by Samuel Sipepa Nikoma, the Water Resources Minister. On May 2012, a television documentary or docufiction aired on Animal Planet, which centered on the experiences of former National Oceanic, Atmospheric Administration scientists showing a CGI recreation of an amateur sound and video of a beached mermaid and discussing scientific theories involving the existence of mermaids. In July 2012, in response to public inquiries and the possibilities that some viewers 
may have mistaken the program for a documentary instead of a mockumentary, I guess you could also call it. The National Ocean Services, a branch of NOAA, made the unusual declaration that no evidence of aquatic humanoids has ever been found. A year later, in 2013, Animal Planet followed this up by airing another docu-fiction titled Mermaids, The New Evidence, featuring previously unreleased video evidence, including what a former Iceland geo-survey scientist witnessed while diving off the coast of Greenland in an underwater submersible. The videos proved two different shots of what appeared to be humanoid creatures approaching and touching their vehicle. NOAA once again released a statement saying the person identified as a NOAA scientist was an actor. The actor is separately identified as David Evans of Ontario, Canada. Obviously, these were all hoaxes. I cannot say though if the intention was to fool people or to entertain, but regardless it did mislead and confuse. Another possible over from merfolk could have been Europeans seeing natives fishing off the shore. An example of this is the AMA, or AMA, are Japanese skin divers, predominantly women who traditionally dive for shellfish and seaweed, wearing only loincloths, and who had been in action for at least 2,000 years. They operate off reefs near the shore and some perform for sightseers instead of diving to collect a harvest. The best part of the hoax video on Animal Planet is how hard they worked to say what they were describing. Their merfolk were sea monkeys. Not like the ones you buy in the packets, but they were monkeys as humans were once monkeys and that's where they have the division happening way back before they were humans. And these ones evolved underwater. That was the most possible origin of merfolk I've heard yet though. Except for that they're either being manatees at a great distance or misidentified fishermen and women, as with the Yama. More people in the past may have fished that way than we currently know of, as in more societies. Sounds like any society that had a reef around their island or near their island would have done this. And possibly they quit doing it when these boats kept showing up and endangering the safety of their women and fishermen. It does trouble me though, that they are so common in the mythologies of all the world. Although water is a major part of human life. If you see them as just another anthropomorphic animal human hybrid, they become even more numerous. It becomes common to add animal parts to humans. I could see the occasional mutation, as with Sirenomelia, but not a complete race. But in closing, I will say I do support the theory of multiple humanoid races once lived on the Earth. But the complete inferiority of a developing a fish-like being with sticky out parts like humans for such a thing to exist and to still live. Yes, lots of bad ideas are born through the process of evolution and mutations, and lots of bad ideas will die out. It would have been, there would have been more of this design, or unless more fish develop limbs like humans that stayed in the water, it looks like nature learned that this was not an efficient design. And I think for the most part, most cryptozoologists that I've looked into also agree. Thank you.